A serial killer given the name The Rain Man has been targeting brunette young women in rainy nights, having a twisted backstory to how he kills them as they remind him of his evil and cruel mother who tried to drown him as a child, with his way of killing his victims being similar to how his mother tried to kill him. A young woman named Susie, being his next victim, has to find a way to survive this deadly rainy night, finding the truth behind the killer's motives and his identity. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to The Rain Man. If you have any video or game suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that this video will have spoilers, and with that in mind, let's dive right in. Susie, a young woman who lives with her parents, is alerted by the sound of her clock's alarm earlier than before as she missed her bus going to work at the diner last time. She lives in the peaceful and quiet town of Crystal Pine Grove, but as of recently, a series of murders seemingly connected to each other have put everyone on the edge, scared for their lives. The murderer, who has been given the nickname The Rain Man, targets young women during or after rainy evenings. Just like everyone else, Susie reads the news feeling sorry for the victims and their family, never thinking something like this would happen to her, having the illusion of safety until it is very late. On her way to catch the afternoon bus, she speaks to Mr. Craven, her neighbor, who warns her about a rainstorm today, to which she explains that she would get back before it starts, so there's nothing to worry about, dismissing the possibility that the notorious rain man will be back slaughtering unsuspecting victims whom none of thought that they would be the next victim of such a gruesome crime. Just before reaching the bus stop, Susie gets jump scared by Andy, her boyfriend, who explains that he fell as he was looking for his watch, supposedly. It appears they've had an argument as he was seen with someone called Megan, which he swears is just a friend with Susie seemingly not believing it. Either way, she doesn't have time to discuss the semantics in an extended manner as otherwise she would miss her bus, so she gets to the bus stop, waiting patiently until it arrives. Just as the bus arrives, the rain picks up, with Susie getting in the bus, seeing a mysterious man fully covered in a black raincoat getting off in the station that she was waiting at. As soon as she arrives at the diner, the owner Dave instructs her to serve the customers with coffee. Going around encountering all kind of customers, from kind to rude, creepy and friendly, she then encounters Detective Parker, who is investigating the current homicides, asking Susie if she has seen anyone suspicious as of lately. The detective explains the series of crimes are much closer to home than one could be comfortable with, as all the victims who saw the other end of the blade of the killer had been, in one way or other, associated to the diner, with one of the customers even mentioning the last waitress was amongst the victims. Soon enough, Andy shows up to the diner, trying to slide his way back into the relationship, as it appears Susie cut him with Megan and broke the relationship. But ever since, Andy has been trying to talk with Susie and make up, seemingly being a very recent incident. Susie, however, doesn't seem to be interested anymore and avoids Andy, not wanting to speak to him any longer. After a few hours with her shift coming to an end, she heads back home, finding today's newspaper that the latest victim of the Rain Man has been identified as Ashley Turner, the former waitress at the diner, Dave's Diner, the one Susie is working in. This runs shivers down her spine, seeing these crimes are much closer to her than she thought, with danger being imminent, as she could potentially become one of the victims if she is not careful enough. Despite being scared, this still doesn't face her too much, not to the point to become paranoid. As she walks towards the bus stop with the rainstorm picking up, almost at its full force, she sees the bus driving off, which she runs towards but unfortunately misses. This being the last bus, not knowing what to do anymore, she decides to walk the way back, passing by the diner, when one of the regular customers, Caleb, passes her an umbrella, seeing that she missed her bus. Walking for a long time, starting to feel creeped out and almost soaked in rainwater, she sees a familiar car stop by, being Creepy Joe, someone who made comments previously, making Susie uncomfortable. In a nice gesture, he offers her a ride in the pouring rain, telling her that he can get her where she wants to go. Having the choice to refuse, she considers her options and decides to get in the car as the alternative as walking in the cold and rainy outside for a long time. On the way, Joe seems much nicer 
Meister, apologizing for what he said in the diner that she would be the killer's next victim. He explains himself that he's worried about her as the killer targets brunette girls her age, as if he has some sort of twisted fetish or some other unresolved issue causing him choose his victims. Whatever it is, it seems he has some sort of motive with his pattern being young brunette woman, just like Susie. Joe drops her off in her neighborhood when she walks the rest of the way home. As she starts to unwind a little at home, feeling cozy and warm, the sound of the phone ringing startles Susie, who thinks it might be her parents, as who else would call this late in the evening. As she picks up, she is horrified to hear unintelligible breathing sounds by an unknown person who hangs up soon after, as if trying to scare her. Not sure who it could be, too cliche for a killer to do anything as such, she yet again dismisses the strong possibility that she could be the next victim, despite ticking all the boxes of fitting the description of the killer's choice of victims. Another call soon follows with Jessica, her friend, messing with her a little, making a thick, scary voice, asking about her favorite scary movie. Thinking she was the culprit of the previous creepy breathing call, Jessica denies it was her when the call comes to an abrupt end when the line drops. Susie shrugs her shoulders and, as always, dismisses all the clues and red flags that she is in imminent danger. Honestly, I don't get it in horror media. If it were me, I would like every point of entry, call everyone I already know and arm myself with all sorts of weapon and lock myself in some sort of a panic room. If I had one. That's when Susie starts unwinding, watching some TV, but it is short-lived, as she is startled yet again by heavy knocks on her door, scaring her. Wondering who it is, she uses the people before opening the door, with Andy being on the other side, saying that he has something very important to tell her. If she decides to open the door, he explains there's a creepy person lurking around the house when it doesn't take long before this creepy man emerges out of the dark and stabs Andy, killing him. Shutting the door in horror, shocked to what she just witnessed. She locks the door, but the killer cuts the power with Susie using the lighter that she took from Joe earlier. She goes looking for a gun that his father purchased, managing to find it, and plans to leave the house as soon as she can. That's when she is confronted by the killer, when in fear, she shoots at him in the arm, momentarily incapacitating him, giving her some time to run away. Leaving the house, she notices how the detective Parker has been brutally bullied as well, just outside the house. In fear, she runs as fast as she can to get as far away from the house as she can, when she notices the killer being on her tail, being much faster and almost catching up to her, when all of a sudden, hearing the gunshot, her neighbor, Mr. Craven, is waiting outside with his shotgun, shooting the perpetrator, killing him, and essentially saving the life of Susie, who was about to become the Rain Man's next victim. The second ending can be achieved if Susie refuses to take a ride from Creepy Joe, someone whom she assumed to be creepy, making some comments that she finds uncomfortable. During her long walk back home, seeing lights flicker and a bad feeling that someone is watching her, it doesn't take long before she is confronted by the raincoat-wearing man who's whistling, wielding a knife in hand, who runs after Susie and captures her alive just superficially injuring her and knocking her out. As she awakens, she sees herself suspended by ropes upside down right above a bathtub filled with water. The mysterious person covered in the raincoat explains in a delusional way that she will be cleansed and his hate for her will wash away, referring to her as someone responsible for all the blood staining his hands, referring to Susie as his mother. That's when he lowers the rope with Susie drowning in the bathtub with her head only submerged in the water. This displays the mysterious killer at the twisted past where his mother tormented him in some way which led him to the edge of insanity, killing all the young women resembling his mother in rainy nights. To deliver his own way of justice, seeing these young women as representation and manifestation of his mother, who seemingly tormented him as a young boy when she was at a similar age to all these young women. Alternatively, when Susie gets knocked on her door by Andy, with Andy getting stabbed again and dying, she finds the gun in the house her dad bought for protection and decides to leave the house. That's when the killer appears out of nowhere, stopping her from leaving, which leaves her with the choice to shoot at him or not. 
In here, she doesn't want to be a killer at such a young age and left with the trauma and instead runs away, but her escape is fruitless as the killer catches up to her with no one knowing what's happening as a gunshot could have at least alerted the neighbors. That's when in a similar fashion, she finds herself suspended upside down above a bathtub filled with water. This time around, the killer calls her by her name and talks about how Andy, the ex-boyfriend, was no good as he didn't even offer her an umbrella like he did, which reveals the killer is none other than someone who knows her very well. Caleb, the regular at the diner. This shocks Susie when Caleb goes on explaining in a delusional manner that it's all her fault for Caleb turning out the way he is, killing others, and that her death will cleanse his hate for her, at the end referring to her as mother. He then goes on whistling how he did on the way Susie was walking. This reveals the mental issues of Caleb and how carefully he hides it. Keeping up appearances that he is a normal nice person, but in reality, he is a demented and delusional stone cold killer who carefully chooses his victims, imagining them as his mother who did him wrong. If Susie decides not to open the door for Andy when he knocks, she goes back to watching TV, tuning in to the news, with the anchor reporting on the Rain Man killings, with new information uncovered about his first victim named Mary Baker, who was very mangled when first found, making it difficult for the authorities to identify her until after autopsy. It turns out Mary Baker was recently released from a mental institute who had a son called Jason Baker years ago, whom she drowned in the bathtub, but miraculously he survives, being dead for 8 minutes straight. He soon goes missing afterwards, never to be found. This homicide seemed to be very personal to the killer, as she seemed to have been tortured before dying. Susie feeling creeped out, especially as how closely Mary resembles her. She gets a feeling that maybe this missing child of the woman whom she wanted to drown could be the mysterious killer, someone who has turned to killing anyone resembling her due to the trauma that he endured and never could move on from. That's when Susie hears a strange noise coming from the upstairs. Going to investigate, she knows notices one of the windows to be open. She then gets a call from an unknown person sounding similar to the person who was breathing in a creepy manner before. He instructs her to take a good look in the mirror before hanging up, as if trying to imply that she looks similar to Mary Baker or she is her, and she should look into herself how evil she is, as the mother was evil. As she strangely follows this mysterious person instruction, she finds out someone has broken into her house, possibly from the opened window with a writing on the mirror saying hello to her, knowing who she is and what her name is. This being the last straw, she decides to leave the house as she has had enough red flags for her to conclude she is not safe anymore. As she tries the main door, she notices it to be locked, with whistles being heard, being from none other than the Rain Man himself. The Rain Man chases after her, with Susie outrunning him, locking herself in the garage and finding a screwdriver in the heat of the moment as a tool to defend herself with. As the killer keeps on banging on the door, Susie stays her ground, being brave, when the killer breaks in with her shoving the screwdriver into him as hard as she can. This unfortunately doesn't do much damage to him, which leads to him pushing her to the ground, ready to kill her, saying how he will punish her. But Andy rushes in, banging him in the head with a baseball bat, which sends him down to the floor. Andy then explains that he saw Detective Parker outside the house being killed, so he thought on his feet and went in courageously to defend his damsel in distress. He apologizes for what he did before and both him and Susie live happily ever after. Alternatively, when Susie sees the writing on the mirror, if she instead goes to the dark room, she gets ambushed by the killer who knocks her out. When finding herself suspended above the bathtub once more, she explains how the killer is Jason Baker, whose mother tormented him, and now he takes it out on others, when he reveals his true identity being Caleb, or what he calls himself now. He explains how he is reborn after being drowned, not being Jason anymore, and now wanting to make his mother be reborn 
reborn as well as a new better person. She explains that she is not his mother and what she did to him was unfair, but it is not right for him to take away others' lives for his pain and that it won't solve anything. Caleb, furious and undecided, leaves Susie suspended, which gives her enough time to burn the rope using the lighter that she has, which leads to her being freed. Walking around, it's soon revealed he hides out in the sewers under the old lumber, sitting somewhere, whistling away. Something he explains his mother used to whistle to him and what she whistled before holding his head under the water. He continues that she was evil and tortured him mentally and physically, saying that he won't harm Susie and she won't ever see him again. He then instructs her to take the ladder to leave and go home. Just when crying and running in heavy rain to go back home, the police car stops for her, explaining Andy called and gave them the plate number of the killer's car. She then explains the situation with Caleb, or more appropriately Jason, never to be found again. On another hand, when Susie is stuck in the garage with the screwdriver, if she decides to get out of the garage instead, she meets Andy who explains the detective was killed outside, hence why he's here. They both then run towards the police station, but the killer somehow manages to get in front of them and ambush them, killing poor Andy just before getting to the police station. Setting chase after her, she manages to go to the police station and report the incident. However, as the police goes out to investigate, Investigate. He doesn't find Andy's body or any sign of the murder, which leads to the killer not being found. With Susie always in a state of fear and paranoia that she will be killed, never being able to live a normal life again. Finally, the last ending can be achieved if Susie refuses to trust Andy outside of the garage and decides to leave on her own. Getting to the bus station, she finds Caleb waiting, whom at this point she doesn't know to be the killer. Caleb tells her to follow him to his car as it would be faster and safer to drive to the police station than on foot. At this point, Caleb seems to be a magician or at least a twisted version of Batman as he manages to teleport ahead of everyone from one place to another without anyone noticing him. Caleb, instead of taking care to the police, drives to the old lumber where he reveals he is the Rain Man. Lucky for Susie, as she still has the screwdriver with her, she uses it and stabs Caleb, which actually kills him this time. Therefore, the story concludes here with Caleb being a tormented and mistreated kid who grows up to resent his mother and feeling reborn as a new person, never allowing anyone to hurt him. However, over time, his resentment turns into demons who don't let him sleep at night, afraid of the image or thought of the mother, someone who broke him. That's why he decides to kill her to get rid of his demons. However, killing her doesn't solve anything, leading to him becoming his own demons, going after anyone resembling the mother, killing them, never shaking off the fear of the invincible monster that he created in his own head, being the representation of his mother. And that's about it for this video folks. If you enjoyed that, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host Star, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.